This morning, I heard a great case. Studies show that most Americans move to a new community at least once in their lifetime. It can be very unsettling. So much so, it can disrupt the relationship. This was no exception for the couple that came into divorce court today. Divorce court is now in session. Good morning. I'm here today with Ina Rivera and Adam Rivera. The two of you have been married for three years. You are currently separated and do not want to be married anymore. Mrs. Rivera, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? We are here today because what was supposed to have been a two-day break uh, for Mr. Rivera turned into a two-year break. My husband went to Fort Lauderdale and has not yet returned. When did he go to Fort Lauderdale? Two years ago. What did he say as he left? Um, we have been having arguments. We had just recently moved to Florida, to Jacksonville, mm -hmm. to be with my family. Um, I moved to Florida because that's what he wanted. But his family is in Fort Lauderdale. My family is in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. We agreed that we were going to go with my family first. And once we were established and settled, we would move down south with his family. When we got to Jacksonville, he didn't like it. He didn't want to be there. He didn't like his job. He wasn't making the money that he was used to making. So he was stressed. He would walk in the door. His attitude changed. He wouldn't communicate. He kind of kept to himself. Um, after dealing with that for a few weeks, I was like, you know, maybe you just need a break. Maybe you need to go visit your family. You know, just go ahead and go. In other words, did you put him out? I did Because it looks like that's where we're going. I did not. For the record, I was Did you out. ask him to leave? I asked him to go to it for a few days. So you suggested that he depart? He had depart. been wanting to go. I didn't say get out. That's where he wanted to go. He had been wanting to visit. So I said, go ahead and go down there. Okay. Mr. Rivera, your, your, your uh, version of that event. I really didn't want to move to Jacksonville because I didn't know anybody there. Um, well, why did you move? What, what, things not going well in Cincinnati? Yeah, it started to not go well. We both lived in Cincinnati long enough, and I was pretty much tired of the cold weather. Um, right. And a lot of other stuff that was gotcha. going on in Cincinnati. It was just time to get away from Cincinnati. You needed clean. You needed a yeah, fresh yeah, start. Yeah, a fresh start. All right. Um, we agreed to move to Jacksonville. I, like I said, I gave in because I knew she didn't. Her thing is, she has, like, a comfort zone that she tries to stay around. Like, she doesn't want to get outside of her comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'm more, like, I can go anywhere and you make try new, new friends. Things, do new stuff, new, new all people. that. Right, So right. what went wrong in Jacksonville? When we moved to Jacksonville, it was like, I moved to the Wild West. That's what it seemed like. It, it was like, there was, there was, there was, I couldn't find nothing to do. I would ride around on my motorcycle and try to find stuff to do. Nothing to do. How did that impact your relationship with Mrs. Rivera? Because when you move somewhere and you don't know anybody, you know, t to me, you rely on one another for comfort, care, and, and, and fun. Why did it pull you two apart instead of bringing you two together? She knew people. Her family, her mom, her sister, they were there. So she was okay. She was okay. That, that's still within her comfort zone. Me, like I said, I jumped outside of my comfort zone and was like, ah, okay. Well, Mrs. Let's Rivera... Let's go down there. If you knew people and you were comfortable, did you do anything to bring him aboard and make him a part of your life, your family, and your community? Judge, we moved in with my family. Um, my, my family loves him. There was never an issue. They did everything to make him comfortable. I did everything to make him comfortable. That's just not where he wanted to be. But he mentioned not wanting to move to Jacksonville because he didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone in Fort Lauderdale. His family that lives down there, he doesn't really know them. So we both would have been moving down there, you know, with people that either one of us really know. We would visit his family a, a couple times a year, and they would be in his ear like, hey, get your family, move down here, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like that. We're talking settings and circumstances. How did the settings and circumstances tear you apart? Was he angry about what he was doing? Was he not working? What, what Mr. happened? Mr. Rivera worked. Our relationship from jump, I, I described him, he was my Mr. Perfect. We got along great. We communicated. We moved to Florida. He completely changed. Like I said, he didn't like his job, so he would walk in, sit right on the couch, watch a motorcycle or a tattoo show. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't play with our son. He kept to himself. What would you do to make him feel better? I would try to talk to him. I would ask him, Nothing. what's wrong? 
Uh, would you ask him like that, or were you mad that Mr. Perfect left and he came home human, and you didn't like the negative part she of his humanity, like and you, you were a little warm about it, weren't you? After weeks of me trying to talk to him. Weeks? Yes, weeks. Did you hear that, Joe? After she tried everything for being weeks. fine for years? Yes, weeks. I would ask him, you know, what's wrong? Well, I don't like my job, or... He always so blamed he it on something else. So he gave you years of Mr. Perfect, and he had two weeks to get his crap together the moment he became human. It was like four weeks, <laughs> yes. You need to be shaming yourself. <laughs> you really, really do. Did I get that right, Mr. Rivera? You got it that, right. that uh, you were unhappy, and she met that unhappiness with, with distress over the fact that you weren't making her happy? The things that I would try to do because I was unhappy, I would try to get her out of the house. I would try to tell her, ah, let's go, because we, I, if she said she didn't know anybody there, I'm like, okay, well, let's go explore Jacksonville together. And find some people. Yeah, let's go I find something like to do. I don't like going outside. It was too hot. I have naturally curly hair. I was in days flat ironing my hair for me to go outside and my hair is like this. So your hair is more important than your husband's no, happiness. No, my hair is not more important, but my, my husband rides motorcycles. I don't want to ride a motorcycle in 90-degree weather. We could have got in the car. It didn't make a difference how we got out. I was just trying to get out of the house. I was trying to get out of the house to find what was around me. I can't just move to the middle of nowhere and not know what's... He what's, what's I'm going to try to move idea. on to something else so you can rehabilitate your character. Because it needs yeah. it. Why do you have trust issues? What, what were your concerns? We're laying in the bed. His phone goes off. I grab it like I always did. It's a text message. It's a naked picture. His reply to her was, you're hiding all the goodies. So she sends him another picture with her front completely exposed. Mr. Rivera, I'm going to start with you. I understand that in addition to the move and being unhappy, and I think I understand what happened there, mm -hmm. but you also have trust issues. In be between the two of you. Yeah. Well, Who doesn't I, trust whom? She doesn't trust me. I don't have trust issues. I, I pretty much, if she's going to go out or do whatever she's going to do, fine, go do that. So that we can have a pretty much like time apart from each right. other so that when we come back together, it's like you kind of miss each other. How do her trust issues uh, uh, manifest themselves? Um, she, she, she's got a, a, an addiction to social media. Mm -hmm. And on social media, as soon as we moved from Cincinnati, everything went haywire on social media. People were, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that. She wanted the password to my social media accounts. And I'm like, well, if they're mine, why would you need the password? She kept insisting that, oh, I want the password, I want the password. You're being sneaky. Whatever you're doing on there, you're being sneaky because I would meet new people from my motorcycle club that were in that area. So Let she me thought ask I was being you sneaky. this. Was she allowed on your social media sites or did you keep that separate from her? No, at the time we were, I mean, we were friends on each other's page. So, I mean, mm -hmm. she could, she, she could, could get see online, what she could see what saw. I posted, I could okay. see what she posted. But she wanted to actually see Messaging the behind or, the scenes yeah, on it. Yeah, well, the okay. messages back and forth. Like, <laughs> so she wanted to see what was going on. I, I true enough, I, 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 I didn't have anything going on on there. He's but a liar. it was the benefit of the doubt that I was like, I didn't want to give her my password. Okay. So Why do you have trust issues? What, what first, were your concerns? My first issue with um, Mr. Rivera was, the first instance, I went through his phone. Um, we had a perfect day. Everything was fine. We're laying in the bed. His phone goes off. I grab it, like I always did. It's a text message. It's a naked picture of some girl. His reply to her was, you're hiding all the goodies. So she sends him another picture with her front completely exposed. That's the first instance. That, when he got out the shower, I simply told him, I was calm. I told him, your phone went off. You can check it. I'm going to bed. You go to bed also. We both have to get up in the morning. When you get up in the morning, pack your stuff and take it with you. I was calm. Did that happen, Mr. Rivera? I don't remember that. That incident, I do How not remember. What do you mean? Now, see there? That means it happened, and I'm going to tell you why. I would remember. People remember whether or not somebody sent them a naked picture and, he then, and not enough was shown, night. so you needed to see more. I, don't think I can absolutely that say sent. that never happened to me. I don't think if it was you a naked can't say it didn't sent. happen, it think, happened. It, it wasn't a naked happen. picture, but something got, something got the sent. I don't think it was naked. a naked picture. But Once he told her, you're hiding all the goodies, that's when the naked picture came. Now, if a message got sent, it got sent. I, I, I'll take... Fault at, at something I probably did better. Well, well, tell me about the next one. The next instance, 
Mr. Rivera had his social media page set up to where I could only see certain things. Certain things were blocked. So once I got the password, he had cleared everything out. Everything was empty. Is there a she reason why? No, no, is there a reason why you would have a social life or an entire area of her life that she would be precluded from, no, from there participating was. That's not true. in? That's not true. I, I, I set up my account because one, I don't want, I, I don't put all my business on social media. She does her every I footstep. I only have friends she can post and family going on social media. I don't she have random post, strangers she on can my post social that media. She's, she's, oh, I just ate a bowl of cereal. She wants to post it on social media. I don't do that. I don't want everybody to know at my every move. She does that, and she, it's like she's addicted to it. It would be times we'd be asleep, three, four in the mor morning. I roll over and I hear. T -t 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 -t. I wasn't and because on she's, social she's media. On I just social couldn't media. sleep. She's so on I would social be on media. my phone. Do you, do you post your every breath on I social media? I do not. Media? When I'm upset with him, yes, I post it. I vent. And I shouldn't, but I did. And oh, the, I have so, he, so, so much to say about that. I know. Yeah, and the that's whole, a, that's he, a lot he claims that he, he did the social media for motorcycle, you know, so he can get to meet people in his club in other cities and states. That's, that whole situation I didn't like. Let me explain to you my, my, my thoughts on this matter. Me and my son, we didn't hear anything from him for almost eight months. Mr. Rivera, did you just bounce? No, I was told to get your stuff. While I was at work, she sent me a text. I want you to get your stuff and get out. So to me, get out means go. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Don't forget to join the conversation on social media. Go to facebook.com slash divorcecourt and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at divorcecourt. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. I understand that this relationship is over, but I have to say this because you're going to have other relationships and other people are paying attention to what's going on. This social media stuff is not... It, everybody's using it, it, it as an excuse to feel better right now. It, it's like, I, I have a problem, so instead of being an adult and sucking it up, then talking to my husband or my wife about it. I'm going to go social media like I'm 15 and tell all my little girlfriends about what he said, blah, 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 blah. Attack, then reach out and all that kind of wow. stuff. You are not 12 anymore. I couldn't talk now, to I'm Adam. Not, I'm still talking. You are not 12 anymore. You do not resolve your problems in the hallway of a high school, which is what social media has turned out to be. It can be used you, you know, import, you know, uh, successfully. I don't post anything, message anything, do anything that would cause me concern. My husband can be right over the top of my head anything I type. If I'm getting ready to type something and I would want to look over and see if he's there, I don't type it because he's number one. Mm -hmm. He's number one out of everybody. And the minute you start... Taking your problems and disseminating it to the world at large, even if it's your family and friends, he is no longer number one. He's number 17. And, and when, when your man or your woman is number 17, you can't keep him. Just doesn't, doesn't work out. All right, I'm going to say that. Now, why don't you tell me about his financial shortcomings? Because I'm through fussing. His financial short, um, I'm not actually sure how short they were. When he left, we didn't, me and my son, we didn't hear anything from him for almost eight months. So there was no support, no phone calls. I had no way of getting in touch with Mr. You Rivera. had no idea where he was? I knew where he was. I knew he was in Fort Lauderdale. I had no way to contact him. I would have to reach through to his, his family members mm -hmm. or just try other sorts. I had no way to contact him directly. So there was no contact. There was no financial support for our son. Mr. Rivera, did you just bounce and not talk to your wife, not talk to your, uh, to her about your child, not make sure that your kid was okay. Did you just bounce? No, that's not true. When uh, let's go back to when she said she told me to get out to 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 leave for a few mm -hmm. days. That wasn't what I was told. I was told to get your stuff while I was at work. 
She sent me a text. I want you to get your stuff and get out. So to me, get out means go. So mm-hmm. I left. Right. And and not only did I just leave, I left everything I had. All I had was a mo- You couldn't time, take it with you. I had my motorcycle. I got on my motorcycle. And just And, and, and whatever I had out. on my back and like a bag like a cowboy and rode out. That's how he could fit on the bike. She had both cars. I was gonna take the car, but she said, give me my keys back. So I gave her the keys. But, so, but what about your son? When I left, that's not so true that, that she didn't get in contact with me. She had my number because I didn't change my number until after the fact where she was back to back calling and calling and calling and calling and calling while I'm at work. I work at a motorcycle shop, so I can't physically stop doing what I'm doing to, to text back, and there's paragraph after paragraph after paragraph after How paragraph. How long was it between the time you left and you first contacted her about your son in any way, shape, or form? I want to say it was a few weeks. It had to be a few weeks because she told me to send her some money. At the time, when I first got down there, I wasn't working. I worked, like, little odd jobs with my uncle. Um, did did so, he contact you within a couple of weeks so when I, you asked I, him to send I you I spoke money? with him a couple weeks after he left. We so had you did have no, a means by we, which to get older. No, he, he changed his number after that. We had an agreement. I told him just give me $50 every two weeks for daycare, $100 a month. That became, he, I think he may have sent it once, and then I didn't hear from him for like eight months. Is I that true? He disappeared. No. I sent it more than once, but it's st- her thing with money is, is that's, a, that's a problem too. I sent it more than once, but then when I sent it, and she, you just heard her say $50 every two weeks, $100 a month. When I would send it, oh, that's not enough. That's not enough. So now she wants more. But I'm like, if we agreed on $50 and I send the $50, you can't, you can't say, oh, well, that's not enough. Do you really think $50 every nah. two weeks is enough to support your child? No, it's not. I, I mean, it's not. But like I said, when I left, I quit my job and everything that I was working when I was in Jacksonville. So I have to start no, let, all let me over. say this, Mr. Rivera. At no point in time do you get to do anything that precludes you from taking care of your child. And I don't care how crazy she was or whatever she was doing, because I'm sure she was off the chain, off the hook, wrong, ratchet, and all kinds of other things. But you don't do things that preclude you from making sure that your child is financially stable. And that's exactly what you did because it was in your best interest. And that was not cool. On divorce court. Her mother is with us. Does she help no. with the kids? They could tie her up and just do what they want with her. They wouldn't tie up grandma, would they? Yes, they would. But you have 10 children. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. I don't think I ever want to get married again. You got 10 kids. You got plenty to do. Visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. and Mrs. Rivera, I'm glad you're getting a divorce. Mrs. Rivera, I will say this to you. You're foolish. You had a good thing. As soon as it wasn't a perfect thing, it made you angry. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. You most certainly are not perfect. And the next guy you get is not going to be perfect. And unless you're willing to put up with a little bit of, you know, they say for better or for worse for a reason. It's not going to be all you know, lollipops and sunshine. And when it's not lollipops and sunshine for your husband, you at least give him a lollipop. You might not be able to make the sun shine, but you can give him a lollipop, and you didn't do it. You decided that your marriage was about you, for you, and because of you, and when he hit a rough patch, you were like, I'm sick of you. I'm tired of it. You're not a king and wonderful anymore because you're not doing everything I want to. You're no longer Mr. Perfect, and I have no obligation to give anything to you. That's tired and that's sad and he's a good dude. Mr. Rivera, you were, you were cold until you got on that motorcycle and rolled off like you didn't have a kid. At no point in time do you get to do that. You know, as a mother, she can't just, well, I'm not going to work now, so my kid's not going to have anything to eat. You didn't have a right to do that. So, you know, take care of your kids. Be a better person. Be a nicer person. She's always going to be the father of your child. Don't make it difficult for him to contact you. Don't make it difficult for him to see that baby. Don't make it difficult for him to do the right thing by your child because you have an attitude or problem. Drop the attitude because the marriage is over. And that all he is to you now is the father of your child. And you need to treat him with respect so you don't have any whole bunch of difficulties and chaos. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes, ma'am. This matter is adjourned. (laughs) 
Marriage is all about give and take. So if you're married and you're doing all the taking and none of the giving, you won't be married long. Call us at 1-877-311-2222.